uh, I think I think the Californians brought them with them when they started invading. And they're dirty. Maybe. Too. So back to my story. So I'm seeing them in my house. Huh. And I decided to get a bug zapper, right? And I put them, there's this one bathroom. You know the bathroom by the garage? And uh, I put this bug zapper in there, which is great. But now it smells like fried bugs. And I think I got the taste of fried bugs in my mouth. Uh, that's one of those things that you can't unknow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now back to the other story. Oh no no no! But but I mean I mean I mean for you like I can hear the legend of it, but you you have the thousand yard stare of somebody who knows what fried bug tastes like. <laughs> no, I didn't taste we, we, it. We it's just had this... one. We we had one outside, and it would fry these gigantic outdoor bugs so thoroughly that Ashley just demanded we stop turning it on because the the smell of a gigantic fried bug just disgusted her so much that she didn't want to be outside uh, well, and, and yet what um hmm that's wild because like uh, uh at the same time uh I, I i have purchased and eaten crickets and grubs and they were kind of tasty <laughs> i think it's the degree brian these are just like <laughs> super fried I think if yeah if you if you any of the bugs that you bought uh, uh, if you got them that well done you'd probably send them back. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that it's steak; it's that it's overcooked steak. Yes, yeah, it needs ketchup. It's it's there's a difference between a well done steak and watching an electrified ox scream as it burns alive. <laughs> yeah, this is Thomas Edison. Listen, demonstrating why <laughs> the direct alternating current, current bug alternate, zappers yeah. are dangerous. Oh. I accidentally made a bug a bug trap. I put a I put a hue light in my on my balcony light, my little porch light. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I thought, well, that's going to be really bright and really visible. So I'll try to diffuse it. So I took I've got uh, those little mailer labels, just little adhesive heat heat paper things. So I put them on there thinking, oh, you know what? They're going to be white. The color will go through them. Uh, and then I looked at it the other night. I see all these dots and specks and all of the little flies had found their way in and like gotten it's just dead a, on the on the adhesive there. You just have a bucket of bugs. A little bug, little bug bucket. And then you can, bucket of bugs. but they're under the paper. So you can tap the paper and you can like kind of squish them against the glass. Okay, that's a little sadistic. Hey everybody, we're gonna start the show in just a minute. It's the weird things. It's June 9. What's everybody doing on a Friday? Uh, good. We got uh, we have incoming uh, we 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 have incoming Dow boys, and a yep. whole infestation of them. <laughs> oh yeah, we need to put out our traps now. That's right. We, uh, I'm thinking about uh, taping some of that diffusive uh, lighting stuff to a light, and mm -hmm. then maybe we could trap all of them in there. Yeah. Put some Vegemite on it, though. <laughs> yeah, they love their Vegemite over there. <gasps> All right, you guys want to do a show? Yes. Ready to go, Andrew? Oh, did he get uh, uh, yes? So did you get did you, did you yeah, not? Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry, I couldn't. I I wasn't looking. I asked and I wasn't looking, which is <laughs> that's the way it goes. Okay. I thought I did something wrong, but I like it when you take the blame. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll count you in, Andrew, for the Weird Things program in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Adrian Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Brian Brushwood. Hello. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Nobody asked you, Bryce. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I really <laughs> did. <laughs> Bryce is the uh, neutron to this uh, wild arrangement of electrons just flinging back and forth in almost a neon-like gas environment where you never know where they'll end up. Yeah. Maybe Bryce, it'll be maybe it'll a singing intro. Up. Maybe it'll be a character voice intro. Maybe it'll be a conceptual yep. intro. Maybe it'll be meta. Ooh. Uh, we will see mm. next episode. But this episode, since the intro is done, we'll jump right into the topic. Uh, any of you watched the Apple keynote on Monday? Uh, I read up on it. Yeah, it's good enough. The, uh... Uh, I watched it. I, I, well, I watched at the point that I realized that it was happening. <laughs> as soon as yeah. people were talking about it, uh, so I didn't see anything up to. I think I got the vast majority of the Vision Pro uh, 
uh, announcement, which was really what I was there for. Yeah, that's what everybody was there for. And I, I was watching it at work. Well, I drove into work listening to it and then got into work and in the uh, cafeteria on the big screen TV, people were watching it. Then I went up to our floor and some people were watching it there. And, uh, you know, they're doing this. What a great year for the Macintosh. Here's our new Mac. Shut up. Here's our new watch. Shut up. You know, here's this. Get to it. And then, and then they start to wrap up and we're like, oh, no. Like, they can't, if they weren't going to announce would have had to do they would have leaked something the day before like oh we're yeah. just we're excited to talk about this they handled it wonderfully well they knew the expectations were there and then they announced their vision and they used the term augmented computing augmented reality like once and then they kept using the term spatial reality spatial computing so, is what is what i yeah. saw yeah spatial, yeah exactly spatial computing sorry so what are our thoughts uh um i uh Mm, I you sound conflicted. I am conflicted because this objectively appears to be the best iteration of some VR stuff and we're big we've all really enjoyed during the apocalypse. We all enjoyed golfing together and hanging out and all that stuff and we're fans of VR in general. However, we are also very vocal about the fact that what we want is a convenient AR set of glasses that doesn't feel like you're wearing a brick on your face and what this looks an awful lot like is yet another set of uh, brick to wear on your face and um uh it, but it's definitely the best one yet i i don't i i am conflicted only this one has uh, uh, forgive me what appears to be uh, stupid eyes on googly eyes on the front i i i mm. can't imagine like i i can't Im what mm. Mm. what if it's good though like, like, what if the eye, this eyesight feature, what if that's actually really good? What if that's actually really helpful? Uh, I actually believe it will be because if I'm in a room and, <laughs> uh, -huh. uh, okay, look, it can be both stupid and helpful, okay, okay. right? But, but the point <laughs> okay. is, is All like, right. Uh, uh, right now we have nothing like uh, you're in the room uh, alone playing, you know, pretending to, you know, beat sabers or what have you. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, you can hear a loved one enter the room and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, 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 any, anything better. Even a pair of dumb, silly googly eyes will be better than nothing. <laughs> and what we have is nothing. And these are again, dumb, silly googly eyes, which I do believe will be better because at least I can fake look at my wife when she walks <laughs> into the room it's dumb but it's and they're googly well, eyes well really the the the, the, the 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 dumb googly eyes are for your wife not for you exactly because you exactly. will be able to see her so she, like like uh, the way that that at least the demo and let me start all of this and i'm sure we're going to get into it everything i'm going to say is going to be taking the demo at face value in the history of this product of this field of products taking demos at face value are very often done at your own peril so if 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 this is exactly what they showed then when your wife walks in unlike any other product that has ever happened it will break into your reality and her seeing your eyes will be the two-way signal that she knows that you know that you are present, that 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 you guys are are being able to see each other, even if you were in full immersion. So yes, that that's I, I I agree with you. It having gigantic bug eyes, or at least what looked like gigantic bug eyes in the demo, uh, is something that is a little silly looking. I, I think there's a lot of touches that Apple put on this that wanted to make this technology human and accessible in a way that nothing in this space really has been before. A lot of the commercials and demos were about a mom or a dad in the midst of a bunch of kids running around, the largest amount of chaos you can imagine in a family setting, and it's still being something that you can wear, which is an immediate differentiator from anything else, specifically in the VR space, and AR is its own weird, weird mix of things. But yes. that, that certainly seems to be something that they've wanted they went out of their way up to and including including googly eyes. Well, and and uh, just to put a button on my part before I turn on my listening ears, um, this does, as I understand it, pass the wife test. 
maybe the kids test. It most certainly passes no other social test I can imagine. <laughs> it is it is still you who alone. Well, like, well uh, uh, which which is a bad one. What is a failed test that this should have ca- has should should pass and does uh, and doesn't? Are, are you are you gonna you gonna walk onto a plane with it turned on? Uh, uh, you could you could walk around and and Good. have crazy googly eyes. Uh, uh, probably not. Are you going to do it on? Uh, not, not, not get, right now. Get, get ready for the Instagram posts of the first time people try to wear it in a subway or walk down the street during it. it. I, Brian, 100%, you're right. And then it'll be mm-hmm. like the first Bluetooth earpiece we saw. Like, look at that. And that. Exactly. We're, exactly. Uh, yeah. and, 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 and I guess that's why I'm conflicted is because there is, and you're 100% right, Andrew, is there is no clean leap all the way forward. It's society that has to get used to the idea of uh, what Neil Stevenson once called gargoyles, people who refuse to turn off their VR, AR devices at all times. Uh, Let's go around. Uh, Justin, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I thought a lot about it. Um, My first thought was what I said before, the if, 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 if of all of this, because I want to make it very clear that in the history, especially with AR stuff, this field has been littered with what I say unironically are Theranos grade lies in demos. We have seen absolute fabrication. Including from our own hometown. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Where I am right now, by the way, I am in, I am back in, in, in plantation and not, not, but, 15 uh, uh, miles down the road was Magic Leap, which raised a gigantic amount of money on absolute snake oil and uh, 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 frittered it all away because the tech they were imagining existing just simply didn't. And and they lied uh, all the way up through there. So my thoughts have all been rested on the idea of if, 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 and here are the big ifs. Can you actually read small text on that device with their screens. Every available hands-on that we have seen in pre-production models, there's a bunch of people that got them. That seems to be the case. So if we're going to take that for a grain of salt, that's a huge step forward. And I don't really think that uh, people understand how much of a jump up that is compared to the stuff that we love, like like the Quest 2, like the, the removing the concept of a screen door and having it look like the vision outside uh, in an AR sense and being able to actually do work on it is huge because I think for what Apple wants this to be is in the same way that the iPad ate into MacBook sales because you might not need a MacBook, you might not need a desktop if you're able to do what you want to do on a really, really fast iPad, especially one with a, with a keyboard. That's an, This is another thing that I think they want to eat into computing sales, not VR sales, not AR sales. They are going for a much, much bigger thing and doing work and more specifically doing work faster and more immersively is something that I think they are absolutely betting on. And the other side of it is the UI. If the UI is what they are saying, no handsets, you are just able to, it is as intuitive as pinch and zoom was uh, on a touchscreen if that is the case, that is another, that's five years ahead of anything that has come out in this space and puts it in the realm, we don't know, but it puts it in the possibility, the realm of this is easier to like, in my mind, I'm like, this might be easier to edit sound on, to edit, like do Adobe Audition, if I'm able to just kind of do that with uh, uh without a mouse and do the and, minority and stuff like report that. minority thing. report yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly because because that's the, the other thing clubs. is that it's not only it's not only the, the 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 uh you know selecting and the dragging and everything it's also tracking your eyes so it theoretically could make things go faster especially in big you know block pushing yada 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 now does it have the fine motion control we will see. That's that's part of the if 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 of all of it. But like in both the UI and the screen seems to be something that in the hands-on people are saying it's the real deal. It's not BS. If that is the case by the time it comes out, 
then I, I, I lean more toward the side that this is something truly game changing. Uh, uh, one, one last uh, addendum to the Brian take is um, all, all of the images that we've seen have been people in spacious living rooms, and I understand why you would do that, uh, but the true killer app is, boy, if you're into that van life, this this will be a must-have. Or that huge fan life. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it, uh, it's bigger than you think. It, it, uh, look, hey, hey, dude, all politics are local, and I know like four people that do it. So we, we might be in an overrepresentative sample, but I am with Brian. Like, like if it can sell to the four people we know with tricked out fans that go to, uh, uh, you know, national parks, like, you know, look, they, they can into a national park without doing a fake VR national park and save on battery life. <laughs> right. Yeah. I I think this is a really promising form factor. <laughs> I think I think, you know, this is Apple throwing everything at the wall, right? There's an M2 chip in here. They made a new chip and R, the R1 chip is in it. Uh they've got 12 cameras, sensors everywhere. There's uh, all of the eye tracking stuff um in in the hopes of making a device where you're not sure if it's opaque or not. Like that was the real, that was the interesting little uh, uh, trend I saw, especially as they were announcing it was, is it opaque or not? Do you actually see through it or not? Um, which I think is part of the eyesight to seeing the, seeing the googly eyes. Um, and, and I think that does speak to like the, the potential for this to go out in the real world. Like, yeah, we're talking about, you know, a two hour, battery hooked onto a little rat tail or you're plugged up to a wall. Now, but, uh, Bryce, but Bryce, Bryce, a supple woven cable, <laughs> a supple woven cable, my which policy. supple woven cable is immediately entered into my Apple marketing hall of fame, <laughs> along with an internet communicator. I, I'll, I'll tell you uh, what uh, uh, they should like every university should start offering uh, instead of a foreign language credit, you should be uh, an entire class on Apple speak. You should be just, able to just speak smoothly in Apple talk. Cause my first thought was, Oh my God, it has a rat tail. And then they're like, and our supple woven cable leads down to the battery pack. It, 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 I'm like, it was amazing. interesting watching the demo with several people who used to work for Apple and do their communications and PR and get their take on stuff. Oh, really? Oh, uh, interesting. So Bryce, other thoughts? So I think it's, I think it's really uh, an interesting promise because what, we, what we've seen with, the, with VR, mixed reality, whatever, is miniaturization. These things are getting smaller. Um, and the, and now we have another, another player in the space, not just meta who's trying to capitalize on their low cost quest, not just, uh, you know, valve and, and, uh, uh and if, if people are, are they still making vibes? I don't know, but for, for, you know, tethered PC gaming, um, I, I think there's a lot of promise here, even though it does feel like it feels very much like that first iPad where it's like, this is kind of big and kind of bulky and, if we look at that first iPad today, it it would look like a CRT TV, I imagine, right? Do you remember yeah. the first uh, iPad? Uh, uh, to be honest, I think we still have a functioning uh, first generation iPad that you know eventually ended up in the hands of you know a three or four year old at the time. Um, but you but, think about you but know it still it still worked. Yeah, it still did the things it was supposed to do. But you think of the design of that, right? The the big black bezel around the display, even the big metal bezel around that, the the home button, you know, that uh, is now a touch thing, higher resolution screen, cameras, all of these things. Like we will kind of see an iPhoning of the Vision Pro as it takes things from other devices. And you look at the design and it is very much that. This thing looks a lot like the Apple Watch, the, the Vision Pro does. I mean, it's got a digital crown on it. It's got like the same types of cutouts and 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 design language. So it 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 also feels like a finished Apple product. Um, and so uh, I, it's a it feels like a good start. Not a great price, but I also don't think it's meant to be a consumer price. I don't think that that's. I don't think anyone's trying to sell everyone or anyone really a three thousand dollar headset. They 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 will always say this is the price for this quality. Right. And then the journey that the product will go on is lighter and slightly cheaper. Like everybody keeps talking about the idea that like 
that, that, that this market is tethered to where the quest is. I don't, I mean, like if Apple is playing in that space, they failed. I, I don't think that Apple looks at the quests and says, let's make a better quest. I think that they are looking at the MacBook. They are looking at the iPad. They are looking at what people think about the future of computing. And they are saying, this is that. And the reason why, Brian, what you saw, all the use cases, they're not looking for you to walk down the street with this headset on. Not right. yet. What they are looking for is every use case that you would pull out your MacBook when, do, when you work, when you're at work and you're at a standing desk, when you're sitting at your couch in a living room that doesn't have a television. Uh, that, that is when, uh, on, an, on an airplane, it is the MacBook use cases that they, are, that they are doing. They did not show a lot of gaming. They didn't show a lot of fitness. And they sure as hell didn't show a lot of like Google Glass style, when's my next subway, real-time internet information. Yeah. This was in Wi-Fi situations that you are going to be at for a little while. I, I, I would guess, I'm, I'm going to hold up uh, Sorry, for the I audio listeners. <laughs> the, uh, I'm holding up my laptop. So I would, I would guess what they're trying to do is this is the device that you have for any moment that you ever feel the temptation to squint and lean closer to your laptop instead yes. put this thing on and then and now it's as big or as small as you you want it whatever it is yes it feels it feels like you know it, it's funny that we kind of frame this as a comparison to the other vr devices because what apple spent most of their time focusing on like we said it was very little games right the only game that they saw I, they saw showed was nba 2k 23 which is in a 2d uh you know apple iphone uh apple arcade game so I have some thoughts on all of this. And oh, I, I wait, think oh, 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 wait, sorry. Well, I, uh, I, Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and uh, I, I think that's a sign that gaming's going to come, right? You'll get Beat Saber. You'll get uh, all, all of that well, stuff. Well, it's owned by Facebook, maybe. Uh, well, well, that's true. Uh, but what all of those other devices do that are gaming first, they have a desktop thing. Right, they have. You can get on your. You it can. stinks, and it, it's, it, it, it is a pu stinky experience. And that is the a number one bullet for this is you want to yes. get stuff done. We're going to help you get stuff done. It may be like the first iPad where it's just our apps for now, and it's not the right thing, but mm. we're we're maybe. But uh, it's a start. I, I think that's the really exciting thing is the promise of this. This is more than just a Microsoft concept video every year. This is presumably gonna be what this thing looks like Maine, you've waited so, very patiently and what are your thoughts I, I i wanted to get everybody's take on this because i think everybody made great points um this has been a fascinating space as a apple fanboy who's been following this company now for 30 plus years and going and looking at their patents i can talk to about patents they filed going back 25 years ago on VR and augmented reality and whatnot and following that space. One of the things that's very clear about Apple, and we touched upon this, but was the fact that like, you could not have done the iPhone in 2006. You had to wait till 2007 until batteries, displays, and processors were bright enough that you could fit that into that form factor. It couldn't have come out a year sooner. The same with the iPad. The processor, the batteries, remember they opened up as we talked about that first iPad, they looked in the back, it was all battery because they mm -hmm. knew there was tablets before that, there was phones before that, but they had really short battery life, limited capabilities, et cetera. Apple sets this, we think this is the minimum product we need to have. It needs to have this much battery life. It needs to have this, this, this. And we've been all following, we've all, you know, I've got the original Oculus, you know, we have Quest, we have whatnot, we're all into this space, we've been following this technology, the Quests were good enough to say, let's get these, and then the Vive was good enough if you're a gamer to say, I want this. What Apple had to say was, what is their minimum thing? One, they said that they needed super resolution, they needed 4k per eye, they wanted you to put this thing on here and not see a screen door, they wanted you to see crisp text, as Justin points out. Um, the compromises were very clear. Like we've been hearing, you know, internally at Apple, if the rumors are true, that there was a huge debate because it is look, it is clunky. It is the clunkiest thing that Apple's done in a long time. It does have this external battery pack. It does do that. And there are some people at Apple that were probably like, hey, let's just wait until we get it perfected. And then Tim Cook was like, can we wait that long? Can we make a good product right now that some people will want? And as we 
build out on this, we throw more money at the product line, we figure out how to improve it, we can eventually get to a sleeker sort of thing. So it's a platform. This is every version of this is going to be lighter and more powerful. And that's where they had to figure out a point where to start from. And I think they chose here. And for me, I look at it and go, yeah, I wish it was more self-contained. I wish, I wish we had magical augmented see-through reality, but that just doesn't exist. We don't have a good version of looking at a lens and projecting stuff because you can't do shadows. It doesn't handle brightness and stuff. Unless somebody comes up with some really wonderful, amazing holographic lenticular sort of doing that, that was a problem. That was why the Magic Leap videos were suspicious because they're like, I'm looking through glass, but it's casting a shadow. How are you all doing that? And it's like, yeah, you know, we've got this light wave guided thing. Like physically, I don't think that's possible. And Apple went with this choice. Apparently, like they just bought the company Mirror, which was they're the ones that made the, the 3D goggles for the Mario Kart ride in Nintendo World which use projection systems. So they just bought that company that builds that because clearly they want to do on glass stuff. And I think that they don't know where the space is going to go. They're trying to figure it all out. I do think that, I think this was the right time. I think this was the right time to do it clunky as it is. I will tell you though, where I think this is headed though. The technology, like the eyes I get, Brian, what you're saying, they looked uncanny to me in the video, but I get it. Like, they're like, yeah, but we need something and we can, let's start with, and the way that works, by the way, it's a an OLED panel with a lenticular lens in front of it. So it's creating this 3D effect as you look at it. And it's basically just sort of generating the eyes. I think that will get better. You know, that there's only so much you can do with that kind of technology to improve it. But I think that that is Apple's idea of, like you said, it's like we want to do something to acknowledge you're being looked at, even if it's weirdo eyes. Their solution for the face simulation stuff, like it's a bit uncanny valley, but I thought that was actually great. I looked at what they were doing. I go, you know what? I would If I was doing walkabout golf with you all and you were all like those dudes, like virtual versions of you, I'd forget in two minutes and we would just be carrying on and having a conversation. I think a big play for this, though, is I think that. Unlike, I think, do you think it can do, I, I've been telling people, they go, oh, the price, I'm like, well, it's a MacBook for your face. And it's like, okay, yeah. here is a big play for this. What is the biggest area of growth that Apple is looking to towards the future for, for revenue? Yeah. Services. I mean, services, services have been big lately, yeah. certainly. Yep, yep, that is the area, because they're, they're looking at upgrade cycles are slowing down. They're trying to move international expansion. They just added, they just brought Apple to India. They finally brought it there and hoping to create an emerging market of people doing this. So they're looking at how do we get more revenue out of existing consumers? So that's why they came up with the Apple Fitness. They've got Arcade and they've got Apple TV. Now, when you get, you know, and I'm not saying it might, next year we'll probably see content, but two or three years from now, when you buy your Apple Pro and you start paying 20 bucks a month because you're going to get NBA courtside, you're going to get Apple Arcade with super realistic games. You're going to get, when James Cameron's going to make his next Avatar movie, he's going to go use depth spatial sensors on the cameras. So there is going to be a special, or Apple's just going to commission their own special 3D content and throw billions of dollars at it. And it's going to be an experience that you're only going to be able to have on the Apple Vision. So I think that's going to be a big driver. I don't think they... They didn't lead too much into it, but I think that's clearly you looked at sort of like when they brought it, bring in Bob Iger on stage and Bob Iger's talking yeah. about this. That's to me, like, I think a big part of it. So yeah, they're planning, they're planning for the, you know, middle and end of the decade. You know, they're planning several years out. So uh, in the you examples know, they gave I, of like, we're seeing a, a demo right now play of, of, you know, family photos or whatever. Um, is there, is there plans did they announce anything about uh, digital 3 d ifying like all your old photos or upscaling stuff so that, that you could feel like you're there in that moment? So they didn't, they didn't announce anything like that. There is, there is actually Facebook has done some pretty good research into this. There's ways in which you can take 2d to 3d conversions. I went and I, I watched some of the developer seminars on there and they talk about their, their formats for capturing, like, you know, sp they call it like, you know, how do you do, they're doing, they have a file format for doing 3D, which it wasn't clear were they saying, was this stereoscopic or was this using spatial depth camera to do that? That was a little bit hand wavy there, I thought, because as you watch the camera move across, you're like, okay, that's not stereoscopic. That's like two 3D depth, but you do have the depth sensor on the camera. So if you read the text, they say, hey, uh, this is Apple's first camera. First 3D first, camera. First, which mm. means there's going to be a next 3D camera. And 
which implies we've got a new iPhone coming out and they've got to keep justifying, you know, how many more lenses they're going to put on there. Oh. I, I think if I were a betting man, I would say that, or a betting woman or betting chimpanzee, it doesn't matter. I would say that we are going to see 3D spatial capture on the next one. And there's there's already been the rudimentary stuff. Like it already does depth maps. It already has because of the camera on there and the IR sensor and whatnot. It can already do stuff. I think it's going to get a big boost. And I think that you're going to be taking 3D photos of the next iPhone. I, I, I think you're right about taking the photos, but also I think that upscaling, just as we've seen, you know, low resolution imagery, upscaled to 4K that looks really good. Uh, as AI gets better at filling in gaps of all varieties, I, I would imagine there's going to be an awful lot of upscaling of past I, content going back 10 years. 100% think you're right. I, I don't, Apple may lean into a bit, but remember, Apple wants you to buy the phone, you know, right. so Apple, you know, forget your old memories, Brian, have new yeah. ones. And so um, it was, it's funny because watching the demo, we all, I think, had the same thought when we saw the dude by himself sitting on a couch. And it was, uh, wow, that's really kind of sad. And then, and it was a very interesting. You, you mean, you mean, I, you mean the, the 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 scene before the guy becomes a superhero and he just watches <laughs> the old film of his kids that were run over by the villain over and over yeah. and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, before he gets his Minority Report. What happened go. in Madrid? We need to know <laughs> yeah. what happened in Madrid. That that was. You have to imagine. <laughs> in big companies. Everything we're saying, somebody was saying internally. There was always, it's not like yes. they're all going, nope, no problem here. There was somebody there, somebody lost an argument because an exec or somebody's like, no, I think it's totally cool. Uh, by the way, I got to leave because it's my weekend with the kids. And uh, last time I was late. So, uh, <laughs> you know, um, there is something, I think there's something else going. I always try to think, what's really going on in there? But I'm, I'm, I'm excited. My question when they're, we did that, like notice Tim Cook didn't want to announce the price. They had somebody else announce. And we're all just yep. like waiting, waiting. And then like, oh, it's a MacBook. It's the, it's an internet navigator where you got the Steve Jobs version of that. And then you, did you see the TikTok video of the people in Apple Park when they announced the price? Growing. Yeah. 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 Oh. oh. <laughs> it was, uh, watching this, my question was, were we going to buy one or two? Well, and, and that's uh, like, that's what was so great about the quest Two is, is it, during the pandemic, it was a price point that I bought one for me. And during the apocalypse, it was like, you know, Bonnie, you could join us for mini golf too. <laughs> and yeah, so we were I, able to buy two. I, I, that is not on the table for this product. No. I, my frustrations with meta as they are, and some of the decisions Zuckerberg does, I still say that $300 price point, the 350, they, they, they came out was one of the most amazing deliveries of technology possible at that price point. And, and it's still people take it for granted. I'm like, they did, a, they did magic. And I think the $500 price point now that they're at, um, on one hand, I'm like, well, this is great news for Facebook because there's a lot of people going, F you, Apple, I'm never paying that. I'm going to go pay my $500 for this. I would argue that if Apple came out with something that was the same as the Quest 3 and it was the same price, I would consider it because I will pay $3,000 be on the facebook platform oh yeah yeah uh, uh so uh, i'm glad we're on on the meta comparisons because even the weird divorce dad stuff the thing that apple wanted to hammer home repeatedly is that this is a device that you use in the real world you use with your family around this isn't about separating you and connecting you to a metaverse family this is about you living the life that you have with your but the people that are around you. And I think what was a very deliberate messaging decision is conversation about the metaverse that's happened has felt dystopic of like, oh, this is just going to be more, this is the worst final destination version of people being on their phones and never looking up. And and then they don't want to be a part of that. They want to be a part of the, the connection element. There's always been a, a, a theme with Apple products that these fit with your family. These make, uh, FaceTime connects grandma to grandkids. Uh, uh, the, the picture and, and have capturing moments that you want to remember forever. And this is something that I think they very del deliberately, even to the point of being weird, uh, uh, wanted to highlight that, that this is not about 
hang out with your friends online. This is about experience your world better. Uh, as a matter is, of fact, uh, that that does kind of undo one of my initial very hostile megrams. Is I said it passes the spouse test, maybe the kids test, but but one test it also definitely passes is every birthday party. It's not at all weird to see one person whose job is to go around with a nice camera capturing the moments. And so now that camera just happens to be on your face and, and you recognize like, like, like uh, of, of the 30 people at this birthday party, I'm going to be the one who's wearing weird ski goggles and I'll be able to have conversations and we can chat and I'll have weird googly eyes. But the moment something special happens, it's without having to pull out a piece of equipment or anything, I'll turn around and press a button and that will become I part of the, instantly created montage of that special day. You're 100% right, but also I couldn't get the image out of my head from Chronicles of Riddick with the people that were like the scanners. I oh, I, I didn't, I, I never, I, I heard it was not as good as Pitch Black. Oh, so it's I never fun. Saw it. Chronicles of Riddick is really good. Yeah, there's, there's, a t I maybe have to pull up the photo, but you'll get it. Um, yeah, I think it, it's, you know, they've looked at where everybody misstepped. Oh, it was interesting, it was, I don't know if you read Zuckerberg's letter to everybody at Facebook. I did. And it's, it's weird because he makes some very good points, but then his last paragraph or two, he describes a very different reveal than we saw. He's like, oh, everybody here is isolated when they do this. That's not the vision of the future. I'm like, like when the guy's literally talking to his children or the woman's talking to her friend on the couch and they see each other, like, like no, that's not, they showed, they, they Apple answered their version. So I think that it was weird because it was like, no, that's, you you did you tune out when Apple was trying to show you how engaged in the real world people could be with this? Um, well, I got to think that I, I would say that uh, there, there may be a bit of sunk cost fallacy, <laughs> you know, in, 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 in Zuckerberg's case. Yeah, he spent a lot of well, money. He, no, I know. But he's he. Well, yeah, but I think he's trying to say, well, we're positioned to be this. I'm like, yeah, so is Apple. Like Apple showed you this vision. They're a kind of, I think, a better version of that future than you have so far. I think. The, I, I think, that, like, man, it's it's hard because, like, I would love for there to be multiple platforms out there. Like, great, I'll buy, I'm going to buy the, the Mac when that comes out, the Quest 3. You know, I'm going to buy that. You know, when that comes out, you know, I try to figure out how to activate my Facebook account if I have to. But I, I don't – nobody was really comfortable with the idea of Facebook kind of owning the VR space or the world. And not that we should be comfortable with anybody owning it, but I got the feeling that – Apple spent a lot of time talking about things that nobody cares about right now. They're like, well, eye tracking, we're not going to report where your eyes go while you're using this because, yeah. you know, they showed about like, hey, we're only going to let you clicks. And people are like, why? Like, well, what's one of the things that Facebook wants to sell to advertisers? Hey, we can tell you where people were looking at what ad they saw. And now we can improve your click through rate. Well, and on top of that, little things like uh, eye dilation is something that in general you can't control. If something pleases you, then, uh, uh, congrats, the computer that's watching your eyes now knows that, and it can't unknow that. Yeah, so uh, there, they I, went... <clears throat> yeah, to, to, to your point, Andrew, I, I, I am worried for Meta, like, because Meta changed their name because they believe that they want to steer this into the future. And uh, uh, when they were pitching their idea with the product and the tech that they have, right, but like when they were pitching their version of the future, it was a cartoon world where you can do a business meeting where Mark Zuckerberg's the coolest guy in the room. And if that's your demo, uh, that plus gaming, and I'm not going to say I love gaming. The, the, the Quest is the best VR gaming platform in existence. And, and I don't think it's even really particularly close wow. uh, if you value the physical, uh, the lack of a physical constraint to a device and the ability to communicate very, very easily with other people, uh, which we've loved about it. Uh, that being said, that use case is small. VR gaming is hard to develop for. They're not long experiences in my, uh, in my, my personal uh, thought. Like once you, unless you're like an addict to rhythm games, um, you, you kind of get burnt out on them pretty fast. Apple's version was you are having a good time in your home. The people that are around you don't feel con disconnected from you any more than they feel disconnected from you being glued to your phone or glued to your MacBook. That was like, like all those steps to me 
where them trying to say every other product in this space is inhuman. This is a human product. Yeah, I I don't think there's going to be only one. I think we may end up like in a iOS Android sort of world. Uh, but the problem is that Zuckerberg Zuckerberg wants to make a platform where he makes ninety percent of the revenue, and yeah. You know, Apple's happy with just a mere thirty percent of the revenue, and I think that is going to be. I looked at like you know they talk about the millions of 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 you know quests that they've sold. I'm like, yeah, but I haven't used mine in months. Like mine's just I got two just sitting up there. Like like I don't use mine, and there are things that I think have been easy easy things for them to do. Like if Beat Saber was a five dollar a month with new music, would have done that. If they came out with like an Oculus Arcade like Apple did, where they had new games and they really supported developers, they would have did that. But I think the problem is they spent way too much money. You know, they tried to get the license rolled off and that didn't work. And by the way, did you see some of the apps that were listed though in the uh, the Vision Pro Store? Uh, the only Rec app- Room. Uh, what was? Rec Room. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's oh. a big one. Uh, is that owned yeah. by someone? Well, that, they're no self contained, but that was the one that. Facebook pretty much horizons was sort of like, we're going to try to rip it off. Yeah. And to not much success, but I think that you're going to see too, is you're going to see Apple throw a ton of money at some key developers to really create platforms because part of what they know is they've got to announce this thing because by the time this is staying is in the offices of different game developers, everybody will know this thing exists. Right. And there may be, they're not launching this thing until, next year and i don't i'm not saying there's going to be a big hardware change but i wouldn't be totally surprised if by the time it comes to launch there's a couple things about the headset which didn't get a much as much attention that back strap it detaches and if you notice where the battery cable attaches on there um that's right at the junction of the strap so hmm. are we going to see a battery pack on the back strap you know, yeah, which, uh, which from know. what I understand, uh, uh, for those, uh, there are other devices that it makes it feel more balanced out. Like you're not wearing mm-hmm. just one brick on the front of your face. You're wearing two bricks yeah. and it feels balanced. Yeah. I, for my quest, I have the battery pack on the back and I prefer it. I prefer to do that. I think you're going to see, you know, the peripheral market, et cetera. They had to sort of come out with this because there's no way they could keep this thing a secret. I think between now, it's six months away till the, and we don't even know that it's coming out in January. It could still be February, or whatever. So, oh, oh, this, this this smells summer. This smells summer twenty twenty four. My 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 expectation is, uh, uh, if you are able to watch election night on your Vision Pro, then then that will be, you know, that uh, I think uh, Apple Apple will get wow, this. That's right. that's an that's no, an I'm aggressive optimistic. delay you're suggesting though. Apple, yeah, they're. I mean, this is Tim Cook, Mr. Supply Chain. That's Mr. That's Tim Supply Chain Cook. I mean, call it. it's, also their, it's also their biggest launch in 10 years. Uh, yeah, but what have they ever missed on a launch date, though? They've never. The, yeah, the only. Well, this big is one coming is early 2024, right? That's what they said. Yeah. Yeah, which would imply. They didn't say first quarter. No, no. But, no, they didn't. You know. So early, early 2024. But we're we're still in early 2023, technically. Well, yeah, they just say, uh, "Okay, okay." I don't, I don't know. I, I maybe, maybe I don't. I mean, Steve Jobs would hedge it. Like I, I maybe. Who knows? They're 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 clearly the fact that we weren't able to order now with delivery in this period of time shows that there's still things to TBD on that. Um, yeah. That being said, but yeah, there is. Or to our what we're all agreeing on is that. There's a huge amount of development time as they're going to get developer ones out there in the hands of people building stuff and start doing that. And even when they start coming out, a lot of it's going to be for people to start building content platforms, you know, on top of it. So uh, I, uh, it's the question. And also here's the thing too, is they talked about, they showed people going into the Apple store to experience it and try it out. And I think that, I think a lot of people who are like 3,500, no way. And then I'm going to get my quest and they're going to get my quest. Oh, that's cool. And then I think that they go into an Apple store and try this demo it's going to be take my money, please. Did did they talk about the field of view, just how wide it was compared to? So they would. There's not they a field didn't of view. Re- they didn't release anything about that, and I've heard two different reports about it. One person says you're always aware that there's an edge there, and somebody else said they had lenses though. They had like glass lenses there, so that may have been. Another person said never, like it just felt like your complete field of view, which I doubt that. 
but Be- I think for them, they felt like they were getting their complete field of view because it is opaque. It's not. It's it's it's. I guess technically AR, but the whole image is is vis- is video. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. F- field of view. What I mean is like uh, there are different uh, VR headsets that uh, that that. You know, when you're wearing an original Quest or Quest 2, it looks like you're looking through binoculars at all times. Then others of them allow more peripheral vision on here. Uh, I, From what I've seen so far, I would guess that this feels roughly like putting on a pair of ski goggles where it's like even as you're going down the slopes, you're aware that you're wearing something on your face, but but you have a, a fairly you know wide field of view. Yeah, I, I didn't get glasses or ski goggles, something like that. I have a feeling that's going to be the, probably because the description. Nobody, when people tried the the Hololens, the Hololens, you know, and the history of disillusionment. <laughs> one was, of course, Google Glass, which looked like it All was time an champ. AR device. All time champ. Yeah, that and that was because it looked like it was an AR device when they launched it, and you're like, oh, cool, look at this, and you're like, oh no, it's one eye in the upper corner, which they didn't kind of want you to. And then people got it and were like, it's literally a thing at my, it's like this whole thing, my phone over here, which was dumb, just a really, really bad bet on their part, whatnot. Then HoloLens, a problem with HoloLens, HoloLens like, oh my God. And we got excited about it here. And then we found out like, yes, the AR part is in a, you know, postcard thing in front of your field of view that you have to keep focused on it. Like, that's not good. That's just not good. That's not, yeah. that's not a good place to start with. So I have a feeling that, Every reviewer I've read of this has been raved about the hardware, questions about where it's going to place in the world. But I have not read anybody who's like, oh, this was, it was jittery. It was this, it was that. Complaints about the weight. That's the thing I've heard talk, people talk yeah. about from, you know, friends, the, the weight on the face, which I get it. You know, it's a pound. And, but there is another head strap that goes across it, which they didn't show. Hmm. Yeah. The, the, the big stuff that I read was uh, weight at like the 45 minute mark, which I think is a problem for the longer term use of like watching it for a movie. And and what they were suggested to do was to tighten the the, the top strap. Uh, but again, to me, man, the UI, like I, I, when I first got the iPhone and I went out in these very South Florida streets and I was showing off my cool new iPhone, the thing that blew people's hair back was pinch and zoom and scroll because that is something that just fundamentally did not happen on other phones at the time. With this, if the UI, if it is pinch, zoom, you never have to worry where your hands are. And that's that's what I've, I've read from every hands-on thing is that your hands can be way out. It can be really close. It can be down. It can be relaxed. You're never worried about where those gestures need to be and if that's magic, if that just works, like I, I, that and the vision, man, like that's, that to me is the product that, that is, that is what sets it apart from everything else. And at that point, it's only how good is it that really will define whether or not it's like, okay, this is the most fun place for me to do emails. Okay. This is the most, the easiest place for me to just run through writing. I, I can make it far more immersive. I can feel like I'm in a forest uh, and and write, and I can just write faster. I can write easier because I am actually taking away distractions. Or is it, again, fine motor skills. Can I edit the new season of World's Greatest Con on this thing? Because if I can, that's cute. If it's if it's fun for me to do it in that in that realm with that uh, uh, UI, that's that's a game changer. Hey. Like that is that is well. In, in, in a world where uh, where iOS is becoming is becoming more capable for things like we saw uh, a week or two ago, Logic and Final Cut are available as iOS apps now. Um, I think Apple's really set themselves up to move into that yeah. space a lot easier. Between getting people onto the M chips already, getting Premiere and Lightroom and stuff. If you if you have that, you if you presume Apple's already taken that intermediary step of having everyone convert all their code to the new chips presumably they're just going to show up in this thing because it's all, it's all easy peasy. And then, and then where do you go from there? If this is a big deal, Adobe leans into it. I'm sure. There's, we've talked about this before about the idea of trying to do our podcast from within VR. (laughs) Yeah. And, and I see that becoming kind of a very, a big reality for it because all of a sudden 
you know, you could use generative AI to create environments. You could use the virtual avatars for us. And, and, and I saw a funny comparison, which was, remember the the Zuckerberg when he showed his avatar, the super yeah. cartoony. Like it was like just like last year. It just just and it was just that comparison between the two. And then like like no no that was an early whatever. And then it's like you look at this and like you're like yeah this is a little in Kenny Valley, but it's a lot better than you know. Yeah. Yeah. The Nintendo. Yeah. Wii's. And that was, that was, that was the, I was talking with Darren Kitchen about it and I was like, I was like, oh, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't go with you, you. You've spent so much time cultivating your Animoji. They've, they've, I now have three or four different versions of the Animoji that I put. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that that wasn't the solution. And then he was like, oh, uh, uh, it was never going to be the solution because of what Zuckerberg did. Zuckerberg being yeah. a big dumb cartoon, they would never, even though they have spent so much time saying, you should have an Animoji. Animojis are fun. Animojis are great. Isn't it a great expression of your personality? Be a dinosaur. Nope. One Zuckerberg trying to be David Brent in a metaverse office. Uh, uh, and that was a wrap. No more cartoons. You're going to look, you might look like a Grand Theft Auto character, but it's going to be a, a realistic Grand Theft Auto character. Yeah. I think that's the crazy thing about it is, you you know, it you, you put it in front of your face so it can do a 3D scan of you. But at that point, we're getting to a point of the user creating data that probably is on the other side of the uncanny valley, right? Like, presume this works, the only thing to go up is, is up. It can only look even more like you. Um, if it's if it's doing you know this is just the beginning um and that's fascinating the world where people can could have devices consumer devices that can give you a good 3d scan of yourself that creates yeah, they, the avatar all of these like that's powerful to put in the hands of people just like you know we were talking a few years ago about putting lidar in in the iphones so there's a couple a couple things i think that apple's getting more serious about machine learning they Earlier on, they're using uh, the transformer architecture, which is the same thing we use for like GPT and chat GPT, whatever the T is for transformer. It's just a, a kind of an improved way to sort of be able to generate text or video, stuff like this. They're starting to do a lot more of that on device and, and getting better with like predictive stuff. They've got a ton. If you look into the developer tools, they've got a bunch of stuff on pose detection, which is like how to detect the pose of somebody moving or whatever. Um, and I bring that up. They also got pose detection now for animals. So like you can aim an iPhone at something and it'll try to figure out where the limbs are. I'm like, that's a very, there's gotta be a really good use case for that. But that being said is that allows you to create really good data. So if you just want to say, okay, you're here, you're standing here. And remember we have these cameras that are aimed down and capture hands and legs. We can then recreate your body. They put yeah. the amount of cameras on here. And the fact that the lower facing cameras are high fidelity. People talk about like, you know, you, you look, you, the, the pupil tracking, they say, is incredible. And then you look to click your fingers. That means you could create a full body avatar with this very easily, you know, because you're going to have all that data. Now, so we know those are going to get better. They're probably going to get to, that'll be like, you know, Vision OS 0.3 or whatever, or 3.0 is going to be full body avatars that follow your hands. With the front facing thing, I was thinking an easy hack to make that eyes, to make it a little bit less weird it depends it's, it's not maybe it wouldn't work because i was going to say that one of the things you could do is uh uh you could actually shape the material the fresnel whatever like a nose and an eyes because everybody's got sort of the same which actually gives it more depth kind of like you'd see it like the haunted mansion or some like the projection mm, systems a face but, shaped is yeah but the problem display. is what well, could work because like it would be, have to be like an inch or so ahead of it because of the other part of the display, and you'd have to use that front. That front glass is actually a lens that is actually a lens designed for the for that you know for that effect. So uh, for those of you not familiar with lenticular display, like old movie coasters, like big gulp cups, things like that, those three D trading cards. What you do is you take that That's material. Right. It's just this. It's just sort of like it, it has this sort of a staggered like pyramid sort of shape so it sends a different light rays in different directions you put an lcd panel under the sort of striped on it which was a very i was like i was really impressed by that to be honest with you i wasn't expecting that and i thought that was actually a very interesting solution to how do i see this person i'm talking to it, it's yeah. very applied right because that idea doesn't uh, never really translated to TVs, to living room displays for 3D displays. Or fire phones. Or fire phones. Um, but 
you know, if it's on or a red phones on a physical display that it's got some distort, like it actually makes sense to do that. Uh, that's yeah, that's clever. I didn't realize it was that type of display. It's really yeah, it is a. I looked at that and I go, man, like they spent a lot of money on this. Spent a lot of money on this detail. The idea that what do you see from the and and that's a that's a question like Facebook really wasn't asking. Facebook's been doing some really interesting stuff with like. Like they have a system where it actually the lenses adjust inside of there to create like really true depth of field. And I think that's gonna be kind of a cool thing to see where they go. But with this, this was like yeah, man, Apple's asking because you saw the how the audio they look at the air the audio pods. Yeah. The sound pods. Mm-hmm. The idea that it projects the sound in there because they didn't want you to have to wear earpieces, but they still wanted to have really good sound, but they wanted to feel present. Notice when the woman was in the airplane, she had her AirPods in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. Question. Did you see a, 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 a Paul, Palmer Lucky's reaction? I know I sent it to, yeah. to Andrew, I but know. Uh, did you see this? Uh, uh, so Palmer Lucky, of course, founder of Oculus, eventually sold to uh, Facebook. Oh, you're saying and, Palmer and... Lucky? I thought you were saying Paul Merlucky, and I'm like, who's that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, so. Yeah, he uh, uh, said, and we don't know whether or not he got hands on with it or he just watched the the demo. But he said to any and all, my official statement to the press about the Apple Vision Pro is this, and then it was just the GIF of Morpheus from the Matrix saying he is the one. Ha! <laughs> yeah, voting. that's uh, 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 yeah. I mean, it's a it, so. it's a good de- it. There's a it makes a lot of sense. A lot of the stuff they said made a lot of sense. IMO. So, who's buying day one? Oh come on! It would have had. Come on, you know what? You're talking. I I I don't know about you two on the bottom half of the screen, but for the for us upper deckers over here, that's going to depend on one thing. How many people head on over to patreon.com slash weird things <laughs> right now? Keep us loud, live, and independent, showing up every single week, giving you news of the weird and futurism and some rampant speculation and 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 and, and, and home. occasionally role-playing games. Yeah. Patreon.com slash weird things. Keep the show alive. Support us. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, day one, I'm going to write it off. It's going to be great. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I decided since I didn't have to pull the trigger right then, it's like, okay, when I do have to pull the trigger, it's going to be two, one for me, one for my wife. Bold to not I, take pre-orders already. I mean, I guess because they don't have a date, but... Sup- they don't need to. It's Apple. No. They've got so yeah. much... Ca- they, they have the notify me button, so they're taking track of that. Like, not like, oh, if we, if we get enough people to buy this, we'll be able to make it. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's Apple. If, if I'm also trying to game theory it a little bit you know if they if they know it's not a christmas thing uh which obviously when they say 2024 they that that tells you this is not for christmas so don't think about it for christmas uh i would wonder whether or not it's a pre-sale in 2023 or sometime in 2024 when it starts to go on sale uh you know and what that does to whatever quarters and revenue and stuff like that but uh yeah, uh, I'm I'm all in, and to be totally honest, I'm just really excited because there hasn't been a long lead up for a product that everybody was kind of waiting to see whether or not it was as good as it looked since the iPhone from Apple. The the only thing that I can compare it to, not only in the reaction, which is almost identical, who needs it? Too expensive. No one's going to spend that much money on right. Heard the same thing about the iPhone. Is this product the iPhone? Maybe, maybe not. It's exciting because we're gonna all find out next year. Yeah. It and I guess the uh, the other option is also really interesting. If Apple can't make this work, can anyone? Will anyone? What What will it take? Oh. What What tech do we have to get to if this is not enough? It, it'll have to be twenty more years and another Palmer Lucky or Palmer Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> will show up and figure out how to do it with uh, whatever tech is off the shelf. It's, see, it's it well, sounded like he said the same name twice. But that's a good point, though, too, is that every manufacturer in China right now, like we're going to see some knockoff crappy versions of these very soon. They're going to be like $500 with their own screens and stuff like this. And it's going to have 
a 20 second refresh rate. It's going to be super janky and whatnot, but it'll be, you know, it's just now they know the thing to make it look like. And that's going to be interesting. It's going to be your, all of the, all the stuff that people were working on before with VR, it's going to get dug out. And then all of a sudden they're going to be slapping on crappy 3d eyes onto the front and whatnot. What, yeah. Uh, forgive me if I missed it, uh, but did they say anything about live streams on this? Uh, like what, what, being able to be courtside for an actual they did, NBA yes. finals? They, yeah. they did a, a demo in the hands-on demo. There was uh, something they shot specifically at a at a at a baseball diamond um, and that made it look like you were right there and was supposedly a very good thing. I mean, they didn't talk about um, services or anything, but they showed it. They showed it off. Uh, that you could have a in in, arena in, in Iger's in Iger's thing, they showed uh, game footage of a, a a basketball game and uh, a game a live game being projected onto your like dining room table or replay. Yeah, so you could see it like as if they were little little men running around on your table. Yeah, and they showed like a multi-screen thing with like I guess F one or racing on the upper corner, NASCAR in the upper corner, and then all that. It was stuff, honestly so. the most exciting part of the demo for me was realizing I could just be in a Las Vegas sports book and just watch ninety different things at the same I, time, and I'm like, I'm I in. <laughs> What we understand is Apple executives have been using this stuff for months and for quite some time now, right? And it's much not unlike another company I'm familiar with where we had access early on to the advanced AI system and just used the hell out of it a lot and had a lot of really interesting and can see where this goes. I think there's going to, I think content consumption, this may be the way that you want to watch a movie in the future. This may be the way you want to play yeah. the game. This may be the one, the way you want to do anything where you just sit in your butt down on a couch. And I think the sports stuff, like, yeah, like one of the people reviewed this said, I would, they're like, I would pay like a hundred bucks a month or whatever, to watch sports on this thing, which. It comes I, mean, I mean, at a certain rent, level, but... uh, at a high enough fidelity level, then all of a sudden you're no longer competing with any streaming service or cable or television. You're competing with, courtside seats and and, yeah. and, and and season passes and so on. I And that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying is that like an Apple Plus, Apple TV Plus thing is going to become a very different thing because they're going to start. Facebook has done experiences and they sucked. Like you go to like a Facebook concert, whatever. And I remember like, I remember going to one and trying to watch a thing and going, man, this, there's so many things they could do to make this better. I have to imagine the teams that worked on this aren't working on it. They're working on something else. And then like three months later, they announced horizons and I'm like, ah, that's why this sucks. And it still sucks. It just still, there's hardware limitations, software limitations, decision-making stuff. But yeah, I think that like Apple, Apple content, like this new kind of spatial content is going to be, they may have this. I think that's their goal is they're going to be well, I own. Imagine owning all of TV. They, they they spent a lot of time talking about how 3D movies, once this, you know, laughed at uh, uh, element of, of history because of televisions and because of how much Hollywood just tried to, you know, uh, uh, hump an extra $4 out of you so you could wear dumb glasses. They're like, no, this is for real. This is like when you watch Avatar 2 and you see that whale rip that dude's arm off, <laughs> uh, you will you will know you have seen the face of God. Yeah. So, uh Bryce, are you buying? Um maybe not maybe not the first one. I don't I still don't have a 3D headset VR or anything. Um I'm waiting. I'm waiting for for the for the right one. For the one. For my one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I, I think that, I think it's going to be a world where if Facebook kind of does things a little bit better, they're going to have a really good future. I think Apple's going to have the, the future, but I think Facebook's going to have a future that's going to be good, but I think they're, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm projecting, but man, do I hate having to deal with Facebook and logging in and stuff or just the ads and all that stuff. I don't go well, on Instagram. I mean, uh, it's more. also, it, it shows you where brand reputation matters because yeah. Like, and I think that you were, you were, you made a really good point earlier to say, Apple pointing out, we will never track you. This is on device. This is only so you can have a better experience. This is not anything that we will ever sell it. We have no access to it. Only you have access to it. 
and they have backed that up with the 10 years worth of decisions in which they have harmed their own relationships with other companies so you could have a better experience in terms of controlling where your data goes. And uh, that's uh, brand it, value that Facebook doesn't have. Facebook has every single time they could squeeze another cent out of your data, they have done it. Uh, name name one time Facebook has stood up to uh, <laughs> and harmed their own uh, business model by standing up to a nuclear superpower, <laughs> leader of the free world. I mean, yeah. it's like uh, Apple, is by their actions, have bought a very specific reputation that I think will serve them well here. And yeah, it's like, I'm, I am, I still pay for Apple Arcade, even though I don't really use it, you know, because I'm like, yeah, it's five bucks a month. Sometimes there's something fun. And the company frustrates levels. They do things and go, why did you do this? They irritate me in some levels, but Apple, at the end of the day, we're, we're aligned on a lot of stuff. And Facebook's a company that I, I, I have the Quest because I think the Quest is a great product, is a great piece of hardware. And there's so much more potential for it. But also, I think, Man, as a developer, you're just not excited to go develop for them. You know, they had to create the whole side quest thing and whatnot because, you know. Anyhow, let's do picks. Uh, hey, I uh, I became uh, perilously ill and wasn't able to talk about this on Cord Killers, but I saw the uh, Spider-Man movie twice this past weekend, and uh, the very first time. It was pure ecstasy and joy. Uh, it was extraordinarily novel. There were dopamine hits left and right. And the second time I went to see it again, just to kind of study, why was that so good? Uh, and uh, I came away with the answer, well, it wasn't because the story was very complex or advanced anywhere. It was all very much candy. Now, it was very, very delicious candy. So you're saying it was a simple story. Uh, 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 you know what? I can't even tell you what progressed in the story. <laughs> it, was, it was not very simple, but there was so much candy. Uh, so uh, it's, it's good. Uh, I, I don't know how much <laughs> it'll uh, stand up to the test of time. Uh, you think it won't hold up? I, uh, I don't well, know. Well, look, the, 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 I, I will also select Across the Spider-Verse. It's a fantastic soundtrack. Uh, I think, obviously, the cast is having a really, really good time. It is visually, like the first one, among one of the more gorgeous achievements in animation. Uh, wholly original. It doesn't look like anything else. And I think that, in a world of a lot of same-same in that space, goes a long way. As for my review of the story and the plot, I look forward to seeing the second half whenever they release the next movie that I apparently have to pay for. Uh, uh, it is, I found that element of it to be intensely, intensely frustrating. That does seem frustrating because my assumption was that there was a whole movie in this thing. And I'm now I'm hearing it's as long as one. It's as setting, long as one. Whole setting, thing. setting the spider table. Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, I mean, look, it's really well written. Or not written. Uh, uh, directed it's really, it's really well it looks it looks great it looks fantastic mm -hmm. there we go um uh, i i got a um i got a little pick i i talked about this uh on on cord killers uh the other day um briefly but i ended up watching the netflix dramatization of a of a true life crime called the good nurse um uh, this was interesting. I had seen I'd seen the, the trailer for this. It came out late last year, um, uh, and it's a it's about a a woman uh, who believes her coworker uh, at at the ICU is maybe killing people. Um, it's based on a true story, so you take it from there. Uh, the The interesting thing that I had not seen Netflix do with this is they. Uh, Netflix produced this movie, but they also produced the documentary about the story. So when you watch this, it goes, great. You want to see the true crime doc about it now? Um, but I, I thought it was, it, it, it's a, it's a good dramatic telling of the story. And if you're really into it, um, if you really want to see, uh, see those folks, uh, uh, and Netflix says a bounty of riches for you. The good nurse. My pick is uh justin was your pick spider-man i'm assuming it yeah. was yes yeah my pick is uh on topic of vr a book that i thought was a fantastically well done book by blake j harris and that is the history of the future that's the story of oculus facebook and the swept virtual reality and basically it's a lot uh, about palmer lucky 
what happened with creating the Oculus, what happened at Facebook, uh, getting what seems like very screwed over by Facebook and whatnot, and then where it happened to sort of that platform there. So um, Blake Harris wrote Console Wars, which I thought was another fantastic Ooh, that, book. That but was a good one. In fact, uh, that, I, this is an instant uh, buy for me. Uh, how recently did this book come out? 2018, 2019. Okay. Yeah, I know um, you've mentioned it before. I would be surprised if you don't already have it, Brian. Yeah, that's good. TBH. I suggest you listen to it, Brian. I think you would really enjoy it because Palmer is obviously is a bit of a controversial figure, but when you want to talk about that lone, brilliant inventor, he is that. He is this. He is a guy that was sitting in an RV in his parents' driveway, buying every VR headset he possibly could, every piece of tech from things that hung from the ceiling, taking them apart trying to figure out what's the optimum experience, you know, went to the MXR lab at USC. They wouldn't give him a full-time position. So he went off and created a, figured out to build his own hardware, did a, the famous Kickstarter that became the Oculus and really launched all of this for, you know, Facebook. And then when in a very tense political situation, when they weren't happy with the way, uh, what he was doing, politically speaking, um, sure. they ended up, uh, letting him go, and there was a lawsuit, which nobody will talk about, but man, Palmer has a lot of money now and has a really successful business doing military defense technology. So, mm. Well, there you go. Uh, the, yep. the, his, the history of the future, they should do a sequel called The Future of the Future. And it's yeah, or like, The Present of the Future. And then uh, oh, the third okay. one, The Future of the Future. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. well, you, that's marketing you, brain. You, you see enough to sort of see like the, the two big tech books from this period this year are going to be about chat GPT and they're going to be about Apple vision. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, no. the story of Apple vision, how yep. chat GPT came to GPB. Oh, by the way, I, uh, I found a new, uh, 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 I always try to note when I discover a new novel use for chat GPT. Uh, my, my latest entry is uh, I got an email from Ticketmaster letting me know that tomorrow, this was yesterday. Tomorrow, tickets for Tenacious D would be on sale in Austin. Uh, and, and I just clicked on the link to see, well, where is it? When? Is, and there's this little thing that says, do you have a secret code to get early access to tickets? And I'm like, uh, I'll bet that exists somewhere. And so I just told ChatGPT, I'm like, go find out if there's a code I could punch in on this. And then it came back and it was like, I have two. This one is you pretend that you're part of this radio station. This other one you pre you, is for artists only. Did it work? Did uh, it yep. work? Uh, uh, I, well, um, uh, you have a ticket the, the, oh. in your name now. Oh. <laughs> Amazing. I, wow. I did the one where somebody said, you know, help find me money. And it went through and it found like the government websites. Oh like, yeah, the, have, the, like, the, the stuff where you're owed. Yeah, yeah I got 160 bucks out of that and and i opening i sound like you know a uh, a hype guy telling like like literally got 260 bucks from just doing that prompt um have you seen now we have prompt sharing no that's wonderful hmm. uh i i, I what, uh, what does that look like andrew what is that uh, so what it does is let's say you start off with a question it gives you a response you can then click share and it'll start to share the first two parts like your query and oh, response to it that's clever and so i yeah so brian could share his to say hey Here's my prompt for like, you know, helping me, you know, like you could start, you could phrase it like, Hey, I want to find out about a coupon code. Are you able to do this? Whatever. It would have to be with plugins and whatever, but you could share it and then say, sure. What is it? And so wow. it's a, it's a wonderful way to sort of share this because it's just is a new day of discovery for prompting. Well, and, and it also is, uh, I assume a good way to sort of bank your best prompts because I, I use mm -hmm. chat GPT so much that I, you know, that's a lot of scrolling to go back and find, you know, what, what was really good that one time that I half remember. And so this way I could, I could just take that and, and copy paste it somewhere. I assume. Yep. Yep. So gentlemen, it's been weird. Hey, good weirding. Good stuff. Uh, I gotta say, Andrew, this, that, that camera tracking is, is really good. Uh, that's I wasn't sure if it was too annoying as I keep fidgeting. No, I think the only times it was like distracting was when it would lose your hands. You you would raise your hands and it would lose. It would go. It, it would say like, "Oh, you must be doing something." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, it was cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, we're we're doing after things, right? I'm... Yeah, sure. I've got thirty. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, 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 let me do a, a, a quick uh, go to the restroom adjustment. Yeah. Likewise. Uh, okay. Absolutely. Well, folks, we're gonna give you some after things in just a moment, but. 
uh, uh, you're sticking with us. That's right. I'm telling you. You're sticking with us. Right here live on twitch.tv slash night attack. Of course, uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Do the weird, the after things in a, in a moment. Uh, yeah, they, 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 ooh. There was some, uh, uh, and a little bit of network issues. So we'll, we'll clean that up in the podcast feed. I don't usually, we don't normally address it. But the weird things gets edited a little. We do edit weird things. We weird things a little bit. So if you're only a YouTube archive watcher, well, our best stuff's on the feed. It's uh, Friday. TGI Friday. Uh... What's coming up today? We've been, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know if it's the Apple weather app or just the weather outside in general. But the the weather forecasts have been a little out of pocket lately. We're having a lot of storms. We're getting storms and rains and stuff, and so I get it. And and when there's certain weather advisories, love to learn about it, love to hear about it. Thank you. But I'm, I'm getting a lot of like 20%, 20% thunder. I saw someone was getting a, sto- a snow, was getting a snow prediction in Austin. I don't know. Dark sky was so good. I just, I, I, I don't know. They, buy, they bought dark sky because the app was so good. And then they didn't take any of the things that made that app good and put it in the app so that the app is good. I didn't do that. Very, uh, Dr. Kyron says, I'm inundated with extreme weather notifications lately. Yeah. Between, I get that, and I get, uh, <laughs> I get noise, I get ear, a noise volume alerts now. Because what happens is I'll drive, when I, if I, when I drive about, about 20, 20 minutes here to the studio. And so if I'm, if I'm, if I'm in the car and I'm singing, if I'm in the car and I'm singing, my wrist is right here. It's two and a half feet away from me. And if I'm if I'm belting the whole dang thing, if I'm going through full throat, just a couple minutes, the little it, ding ding. Hey, uh, you hit 95 decibels. Uh, I think you need to be careful. You hit 95 decibels, which is loud. It's loud. I'll say it's loud. But that's me. That's that's just the environment. That's just because I'm singing in the car and the things right here. It's not like I've got my headphones in and I'm. But I get those alerts in the car so much that now, when I have my earpods in, like if I go on a walk or something, it'll say. <laughs> it it'll say, "Hey, you should probably turn it down. You've had a lot of alerts lately. You should probably turn it down." And now, and and now it's ma- and on, and it's making me think I'm losing my hearing, and I think I might be losing my hearing a little bit because I do need to turn it up a little. I didn't need to turn it up just a little bit, uh, just to get just because I hear it. I just want to hear it. I want to hear it. I know. You know, I knew. Turn that off. Uh, anyway. Hello, everybody. We'll do some some after things here in a moment. Let me update this. Update this shot. Had one Justin Robert Young leave in the middle of the show. At the very end of the show. But Yo. that's all. It, hey, hello. That's all it might be. Uh, hi, Brian. Are you getting all? Are you getting these weird weather alerts on your phone? Are you getting a million weather alerts now? Uh, well, I um. I'm on next door, so I get like a good old fashioned neighbor is saying, guys, the storm's coming uh-huh. <laughs> and freaking out. But yeah, um, I mean, to be honest, uh, boy, is it, I, I don't want to jinx it by saying it out loud. Bryce, am I the only one thinking, isn't it nice that it's raining and it gets below 70 here in the beginning of June still? 
from time to time. I I I like the heat. I'm 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 pr I'm into the heat. I would prefer the heat over the cold. So, uh, as you know, one of my dreams is to eventually make that pond in the back a swimmable pond. I think once I have a plunge pond, I too will become a fan of the heat because <laughs> when it gets hot, that means. It is time to go dive into a very deep, cold, spring-fed pool. Sure. Um, yeah, it is, but until it is getting, then, it is getting hot. <laughs> it is getting hot. Yeah. You know, I've got, I've got a, I, I put a fan, I put a big, I've got a, a just a normal road oscillating fan uh, out on my patio, on my yeah. little balcony area. Uh, and initially, I got it because of my neighbor and her dogs, her dog waste issue. Oh, that's right. To, and it and guess what? Doesn't help with that very much. Um, but now the heat's now the heat's coming back, and that little fan's not that fan's not doing as much. Oh, and oh, and I got the oh, so yeah, so we got the dog we got the dog waste issue. But then, guess what's back out in the in the friggin' parking lot? What? <laughs> not those sounds. Uh, 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 a dumpster. They got another dumpster out there. Ah. Uh. <laughs> They're putting a dumpster out there. You know, and, you know what you could do is in that summer you, heat, it bit. Ooh, don't you want to heat up all that trash? If 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 you want to uh, if you want to get some internet fame, you could be one of those people that creates weird inventions, and your invention can be like uh, a motion detector that aims just over and down at where the dog goes, uh, and then uh, a grid of like 17 cans of Glade. And then whenever the dog comes out, little servos click and just a just pine goes whoosh <laughs> everywhere. Unfortunately, it's... That would be the ultimate passive aggressive move, and I kind of want you to do it. <laughs> I, have, I have been Febrezing. I have been hitting the Febreze a little bit when I notice that. But it's... It's and you know it's not an active thing. It's not like an active pooper situation. There's she's got a trash can out oh, there. Oh, that's unforgivable. And she bags them, but in the heat, the rain, those little plastic bags aren't doing much. Is 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 it within aiming? Could could you? Um, hmm. I've I've, I, I I've certainly think about throwing stuff over her fence, but it's it's that's. But I mean, if you could just drop like a, a odor absorber packet of something, you know, and be all like, oh, yeah, no, I'm helping you out. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you know what? At one point, I used to have been able to do it because she had it right up against the railing. But now she's put it up to the to the side, I think, maybe to help with the scent, maybe because there's a, a walkway on the other side. But. Well, and you've given this advice to me, but oftentimes the solution's just more talking. Oh, you oh, should, oh, I know, oh, I know, no, I know I, you don't want to hear what it. If I, it okay, was good I, advice when you gave it to it me. Good. It's good advice when I'm giving it to you. <laughs> the solution is just talk, just to be like, hey, what can I do to help? I know. <laughs> but know. I like, you know what? This is an okay problem. If this is my problem in life, I'm okay with a neighbor problem. I'll, I will probably outstay her anyway. Yeah, oh my God. So it's like, now you're, you're picking a worst problem to have off of a menu. <laughs> <laughs> like I've been here for, I get Google fiber. I don't need to throw away the whole, the whole farm on this. Okay. Uh, okay. Andrew, uh, you're ready to do some math in? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, can you, uh, can you talk for me just a little bit? My is Andrew. Uh, just, just a little, because your auto volume brought your audio really high up. And so if you talk a little bit more, it'll bring it back down I'm to sorry. the right level, please. I was trying to do my normal talking voice, Bryce, but apparently. Okay. Thank you. All right. Then uh, let's do some weird thing. Or no. After. The other. After. Let's do things after. Let's do after things. I'll uh, count you in, Andrew. In three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Intermean, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. And Mr. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy hoy. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, gentlemen, a couple topics I'd like to talk about. Sure. Um I I'm ask, I'll ask you a question about this, Brian, because uh I've been getting in memory methods, right? I've been reading a lot of books on memory methods, talking to some of the memory experts on this, been working on apps. We talked about uh, one of the apps before on here for memorizing faces, which I've actually been using that now. I help practice with that, so I've gotten better. 
at doing that. And I'm going to probably do a big update to it to make the faces go full screen, et cetera. Uh, oh, and it, uh, can I uh, just uh, brief interjection, uh, going to your place for your, your big uh, surprise party. Uh, I am so glad that we just happened to be talking about, you know, getting names associated with faces going into that because all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm in the field. I'm doing it. This is what 30 people all I need to learn. And uh, I did a pretty good job and, and most good. of them have stuck. So, so Ooh. I'm really glad that we ended up talking about that. I, you know, I've been talking to uh, Anthony Mativier. He does a YouTube course, a really smart guy. One of these, you know, big memory experts, probably the most popular guy on YouTube talking about this stuff. And uh, I was asking about something else, but he mentioned the way that he sees, like he associates stuff. He actually sees stuff above people's heads and whatnot, which made me think about the app. But, um, you know, there's a question of like, should you be using apps at all for memory stuff? Because part of the problem is that phones and stuff may be wiping our memories. That's why we have such bad, you know, long-term memory, et cetera. But I, I'm kind of like, I think for cases like, when I don't get the chance to practice with faces, and like you said, like you don't want to have to practice at the, you don't want the first time you practice in a month to be at the party. You want it to be a couple weeks before or whatever, and just get in that habit. And I found that it's been more helpful for me because now I'm pretty good. Every handyman that comes to our 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 home, I get their name, I remember their name, I'll remember their name throughout their trip here. I will forget it after they leave, which is understanding. The understanding the forgetting curve is important because. You don't beat yourself as up as much because you realize, oh yeah, if I didn't recall it, you know, I didn't need to recall it two hours later. Why would my brain bother remembering it if I need to, et cetera? Uh, that being said, I'll have more to talk about my little journey into trying to prove my own memory. But I did notice a couple times, Brian, scam school and scam nation. Some of your content would come up with uh, actual memory stunts. Oh, yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, my favorite of them is inducing a false memory based on the work of Elizabeth Loftus. And uh, basically, if you've not seen it, it's in Scam Sasquatch and the Supernatural. And we did a Scam School episode early on. And I think we did one on the Modern Rogue about it. But basically, it turns out that when you are presented with a list of words and there are multiple tests each one with varying levels of, uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, consistent results that if you, uh, they're all related words, like I'll spoil it for you. Uh, 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 hot, sweet, sour, candy, nice, sh soda, sugar, uh, whatever. And then you are asked to provide a list of those. You'll end up injecting the word sweet, even though sweet is not on the list. And, uh, that makes sense because the brain doesn't have time to remember every single thing and it's not worth it to tr note what things are absent and to hold on to that, that caloric real, uh, real estate in your mind, basically. Uh, but, uh, the even more effective one, uh, is like nurse, sick lawyer, and, and it keeps on going. But the, I believe the missing word is doctor or something, but your brain auto completes it in there, uh, which, uh, when, when I first read this research around 2003, it was truly life-changing because up until that point, I believed that while I wouldn't remember everything that happened, surely the things I do remember did happen. And uh, the fact is the uh, work of Dr. Loftus, they were able to induce false memories in a child who, uh, of st who subjectively believed the false story more than real stories that happened to him. I, I feel like the more you learn about memory and the more you learn about how everything we have is sort of a fabrication. We don't have like pixel by pixel recall. We don't record wave files. We don't do this. We have to have some neurons that make an abstraction that maybe fire together and create, you know, that's a presentation, maybe a little bit of checks and balances in there. And I think about like, you know, we talk about AI systems and how you have what we call hallucination where you can ask an AI system a question and it might make up an answer entirely. And we go, well, that's a hallucination. And I feel like in Walking Dead, like the end of like the first episode where the guy whispers into Rick's ear, you know, like, like it says, it's everything's a hallucination. <laughs> and sometimes the hallucination's accurate 
sometimes it's not, but it's not something different happened. It just happened to be the amount of information to reinforce what was what was what we believe or a model believed or whatever. Three friends told me a thing, and I will tell you that it's true. It never happened. My friends didn't know. And that's the same thing for AI and it's the same for us. And that's a lot with memory, is that as we saw with the fabricated memories, like, oh man, it's easy. Like my my earliest memory is sitting in the theater and watching Star Wars for the first time. I remember as a kid, my seat, my feet, all that. I'm pretty sure it's a fabricated memory. I'm yeah. pretty sure that that is just me combining experiences, my almost only point in time at which I can establish a thing happening in time because I know when Star Wars came out in 1977 and I know the release date was May 25th. It's my birthday, but I'm pretty sure I didn't see it on my birthday, you know, although that's a nice memory and I like to remember it so. And you notice people get, man, you when you challenge some people on that, they Ooh. they they get defensive because there's there's one record everybody prefers to all other records and that's what's in their own head and 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 uh, one of the greatest gifts I gave to my marriage was in 2003 reading this research I just stopped arguing about things it's like uh, it's like well you said this it was like well I don't remember it that way. Uh, it seems like I would say more like that, but who knows? <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like I, I, I just don't push back on, on memory things anymore. Or well, I try it, not to. And yeah, it's it's a helpful thing to sort of realize that we're all encoding this in our own way. And to argue with somebody over that, it's when in the history of humans on Earth, no person's ever won somebody over with that. Uh, and it turns out bringing facts into it makes it worse. <laughs> oh, so, be, 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 number of people who were convinced because the other person was right. Zero. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it is, it is, yeah, it's a healthy thing for me. Like I remember as a skeptic, working in the skeptic community and dealing with people with crazy beliefs, and I had to say, what was the difference? And people go, oh, you don't know. I'm like, no, I think there is a difference. I think there is a difference between a really good critical thinker and a non-critical thinker. And that starts with a critical thinker. And this was hard. A lot of skeptics never would engage with this. It's to go, I can be wrong. Yep. I can make a mistake. And that's my test. When I ask somebody, they go, nope, I'm 100% sure. The higher the degree of their certainty, the less I believe them. Right. And even, even if we're whoever we is, uh, uh, you know, sometimes you're arguing for sport or, you know, about uh, you're telling stories and you have a different recollection or whatever. Uh, I've learned to build in the habit of saying not, no, 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 it was definitely this way, uh, but instead say, man, I'm like 99% certain it's this uh, because uh, for reasons, reasons, reasons. And, but I never cite my memory as, as the authentic ledger. I think that's a really important thing. It's just to, to have to sort of, and it's hard for people. I know for me, it was hard to sort of embrace the humility of saying, you know what? I could be wrong. I, and you're like, well, you know, I'm a good observer. I'm like, and you know, a good observer means you're good at paying attention to a thing, not to everything. And it has been in my experience, man, I just run into like every time, like, nope, I, I would know. And you know, my experience, I'm like, you are just telling me you are really not self-aware. You're really, really not self-aware. Not that, you know, because if you does otherwise, I ah, perfect recall, perfect this. Great. Are you a trillionaire who has you know made every right decision because you have this encyclopedic precise mind? No. So. Well, and and there is, uh, and I'm about to uh, rope you in here, Bryce. But um, like uh, the experience of doing a podcast or a live performance or a Q and A, we've talked about this bizarre amnesia that happens where it's like you are so focused on being in the moment, delivering every line correctly, coming up with a response as the question is being asked. And then you just let it all go like butterflies afterwards. And then down the road, you somebody quotes you and you're like, did I say that? I don't know. Um, uh, uh, Bryce, hmm. you right now on this podcast are performing more of a, a technical job yeah. uh, as you listen to us, you know, uh, gab about in the whole beginning of it. So I would assume that of the three of us, you would have the more accurate memory of these things. I do tend to have i think a, a slightly better memory for the shows than than y'all do um and, and that that probably in a, I, I in a short term i think even I, stuff after a no year dispute. I, well, well and, and on top of that you have cause to touch 
the content more than once. And it's right. repetition that matters. Like we were talking about faces and names. Uh, I think I mentioned that I personally do the three seconds, 30 seconds, and three minutes thing. If and After that, I tend to remember the name and the face. Mm. But, but if you go back and touch any of the content even once to make an editing adjustment or to post it or to write up show notes or whatever, I would imagine that the repetition solidifies everything a lot more precisely. You t like, like for Great Night, for example, like that does happen because right after the show, I am scrubbing through the file to get it ready for, for you know, to be posted and all. So, so I do get a little bit of that, of that hardening. Um, and then, you know, some of it is, is you know, if, if something was funny and was a meme, then if people are saying it, then, then, then you kind of keep up with it. Um, I don't know. I kind of selfishly remember my, my, my best moments I, 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 think, not, I think we all not, do. Yeah, that, we all remember Bryce's moments. Um, I, because they're so rare. Uh, no, um, that brings me up to a point that I want to get to. So I've been exploring, um, given the gift that is Chat GPT and GPT four, and being able to use it to write code and stuff. Like I had a thing last week and I had to go do a demo. And I was able to make two iOS apps in like 12 hours, which wow. was awesome because I just go, hey, I need to do this. And you have to, I just know enough about Swift to be able to get it to where I want to go. And I've just been like, I've been making tons of applications now because it's just, I know enough coding to go, oh, do this. And it's great because I'll be like, no, don't this. And then I go do some other entire task while I wait for it to sort of process. Um, I, we've talked about this before and we talked about a previous episode about memory and about some people have incredible autobiographical memory. And I know I have horrific autobiographical memory. It's just tell me stories and things that were there, which it's not just that I'm going to use it as a legal defense one day, <laughs> but that might be a part of it too. But people tell me stuff and I go, I believe that you're true that I was there and I did that thing. I have no memory of doing that at all. And I think that as I get older, I appreciate the value of having memory. And I think that improving that would be great. So I've been working on an app and I want to get your ideas to see this. I'm just going to use you guys for free support on this. Sure. And that is <laughs> we pull out an app and I have, oh, I'm looking for my phone, which is the camera right now. <laughs> um, uh, failed me. Um, the point is you pull out the app, you press one button and it just starts recording. It just starts recording off the bat. And then you just say like today I did this and I went to here and then I blah, 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 blah. Then you click stop. It immediately takes it, it uses the OpenAI API to create a transcription. So it's a really high quality transcription, not the one that's done locally. And then it takes it to chat GPT and it says, hey, this person is writing a diary entry for the day. Extract key points, a oh TLDR. My God. I will summary. so do this. This this is brilliant. So I, I've been tempted to add features like a conversational thing, but I just think right now I'm just going to do that. And the data that you get out of it is really cool just just yeah so anyhow i when i get that ready if you guys want to beta test it let me know uh yeah and and when you do uh if, if you're looking for extensions that will plug into systems that are not your own uh because i i could i could picture myself doing this for three years keeping everything in an archive and then not knowing where that archive is but uh, which is part of the reason we've talked about this before on productivity stuff uh i i write myself a very short note like hey here are things you did good today Tomorrow, I want you to attack these things. You are so, great. Good night. And yeah, yeah. So on that topic, so that is the thing. Is one is, you know, anybody comes out with some app to say your your, pro, your personal private memories inside of your. I'm like, eh, and then what happens? It doesn't. So I have some solutions that I want to do. One is, right now, I'm trying to just do everything is stored locally, right? Everything is stored on device, right? I might use Apple's iCloud Kit, so you as the user could go get it but I can't get it. But you could have, let's say the app ceases to exist or whatever that data is still there. I thought about an idea of emailing you a daily, whatever you do, every time you do it, you get an email with that summary. So it's always in your inbox. Yeah, which, which is uh, what you're describing is a higher fidelity, easier version of what I have done for a long time. Uh, although... Uh, to be honest, I, I don't think of it as a diary. And so as a result, usually I, I, it's the first thing I read in the morning is the note I wrote to myself last night. 
and I pay attention to, I, I take pride in the things I was proud of by the time I went to bed, and then I look at my marching orders from myself. It's, I mean, it's, it, this is dumb as hell, but it's basically like uh, Night Jerry, uh, the pen pal from that one episode of Rick and Morty, uh, and that's, uh, uh, but I do it, and, and it helps. You know it's you writing it. Yeah, I, I do, but, but also I know that me about to fall asleep is just flat out in a different state than me waking up looking at what appears to be a wide open day that I could do whatever I want. And so by reading the regrets of me last night, the of things I wish I had finished up, but I didn't, and things I'm excited to get done, I'm like, that's right. It, 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 again, it's repetition. It, it just brings it to the front of your memory. Yeah. Like for now, I look at this thing as being doing several one is just literally to create an archive of what you did and whatnot that you can do and look but also i rewatched the movie fight club i'm like oh i would love to pull this thing out press a button and talk about my thoughts on fight club so later on i could go hey uh read me what i thought about fight club yes yes on the first viewing second viewing third viewing and yeah uh, or it, yeah yeah so that, and then you could do, let me tell you what you could do with this. Once you have this sort of data, uh, one thing is, you know, Apple's coming out with a thing that will read in your own voice. They're going to advise to that, which I thought would be really cool. Cause I'm not going to bother saving the audio files. I'll just let you play it. And in a better version of your voice we could read it back to you. Uh, you could do random stuff like, yeah, let's tell me, tell me like random things, memories, whatever. Like you could have it resurface stuff. It's not photo based. I know Apple's doing anything journal, which sounds cool, but I want to make it really text based and the idea that you have to put text in there. But you could also, you could on one end, if take it, take all this data at one point, just train an AI model on it. It just create a virtual Brian. Yeah. And that's, that's, uh, well, you would have, you would, you would have, uh, an overview. You would have the rough, the broad strokes, but you, it would be of, of decisions and high level things it, w it wouldn't necessarily be voice. It wouldn't necessarily be r responses, dialogue necessarily. Um, well, I, I would say like people write different than how they speak to, to, well, to that point uh, there's, a, and, and I'll use myself as an example. I have a fairly rich 15 year data set to pull from both of writing and of speaking extemporaneously on a mic and, speaking in a semi-scripted way and i mean if we uh I, I, okay we yeah you got yeah yeah yeah, yeah. At, at which point uh, i when i surprise you i usually surprise you bryce in a very brian brushwood way of surprising you <laughs> i don't surprise you in a uh a, a donald trump way or something it, it uh, uh oh, we all okay. yeah you know, we we kind of exist as systems that there's some noise and sometimes you get out of your comfort zone and do something crazy. But mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna suddenly bust out an opera at uh, karaoke. You, you know, I'm going to do a tenacious D song I, or a, a, a Mr. Roboto or something. I, 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 Bryce, this is, this is not a person. It's not an AI person, yeah. but it is the idea of, you know, me say, Hey, uh, I'm going to go to bed tonight. You know, tell me about my high school friend, Jeff. You know, remind me about Jeff. And or or, or even oh. on a meta level, you could say, who have I not talked or thought about yeah. recently? Yeah. Remind but, me. Yeah, but, I, even, but even just you could get a story. Well, yeah, in high school, we went off to lunch and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a cool memory. The idea is to reinforce that, that, that memory. The idea is people who have really good autobiographical memory, one of the things they find out is they write that stuff down. They keep diaries. And so we talk about like that's the first point at which you get it in there. Then they go back and read their own diaries. Hmm. And I'm not saying this is to make you a narcissist, but man, probably a lot. I could learn a lot by looking at my mistakes. Yeah, I, th there's a lot of problems that I know I've already solved in past me form that I just can't be bothered as present me to go back in those archives. And if I had an assistant to say, hey, uh, and again, in a big meta way where it's like, you know, let's say let's say there's a relationship difficulty I'm having with my wife. If I had a data set of 15 years of, uh, you know, journal entries, I was like, is there a time that me and Bonnie have argued about this? How did that go last time? And then it could 
summarize it, and then and then you speak can win the in, marriage. Oh no, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, <laughs> or at least know what doesn't work <laughs> or what goes poorly. Huh. So I don't repeat those mistakes. Well, there's. I look at like for for me when I run a write a when I want to write a book, right? Mm -hmm. And I've got to keep track of notes. And I have a lot of notes spread all over. Now what I do is I'll go grab all my notes and I'll have an AI system summarize them for me. So I'm like, oh yeah, this is what I was writing. Because it's a really great way to gather all that. And I look at like, oh man, if I have an app, right? oh, there's an idea for a book, there's an idea for a book. And it's like, oh, well, tell me some of my best ideas for this or tell me on the topic of this. And so that's combining a thing we call, you know, uh, basically uh, embedding search with an AI system. But Man, I just think the personal frontier of of information recovery is in recall could just provide so many benefits because I'm also like, I really think that improving our minds and our mental ability to recall things is going to be an important, more important skill. We just watched the Apple Vision system demo and like, it's awesome, but also terrifying. I, so I do think uh, one, at least just a, a broad response to where we're coming at this from is... I, I think I think we've got we've got the data and we've got the means, but we still I think have to find the the exact problem or the exact uh, uh, mode of that, right? Like, um, okay, let's say this is an app, right? Uh, well, okay, here, this is a real world example of me. Uh, I downloaded an app a few weeks ago. It's a workout something app. You every day you're supposed to go to it, and it tells you. You should work out or you should not work out. You should work out this strenuously or not. Um, and I never open it. And the only reason I know I have it is because it pops up once I work out. Uh, and if I even decide, like, so I'm, I'm very, like, loosely attached to it. I'm not even all the way bought in yet. But, but uh, that's an app where you're supposed to kind of get ahead of yourself. But I... That's just an impediment to actually me getting it done is opening up this other app versus to, uh, I'm on my watch. I hit the thing. I'm going and I'm going. Um, and so and so maybe that's maybe it doesn't maybe what it looks like is not remind me about my friend or, you know, to remind me about someone I haven't talked to in a while. It will probably be some other interaction of communication, either some proactive thing of kind of like how the photos app on iPhone is, right? Hey, remember you took that trip? Oh, hey, look at these great photos. Um, remember how it felt when you did this epic workout? Right, because do you, do? I mean, do we go to the memory tab in the photo app, any of the three of us? Oh, no, I just wait for it to show up with cool things. I and I'm like, hey, look at you, that's great. <laughs> and so I think that's, and maybe that's partly what the Apple journaling thing that they talked about somewhat is. Like, meet them where they're at, catch what they're already doing, because it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for people to do what say something like you're doing, Brian, which is every day writing writing things down. You need something where where you're catching what people are doing, um, and then then you're catching what people don't even know. You know, it, it, did did you know you did you know you walked a million miles today? No, I didn't know I walked a million miles today. Did you know your heart rate sp spiked really crazy at this time? Oh. Like uh, that's, that, that's the next thing is to, to, to be honest, uh, what you're describing is uh, very close to a 1980s Saturday Night Live sketch where somebody dies and he meets his personal angel who has seen everything that this person has ever done. And he was like, uh, and he asked me anything. And he says, uh, what's the greatest mistake I ever made? And the angel was like, oh, no, no, I can't. You can't handle it. He's like, all right, what's uh, uh, the 1,000th worst mistake I ever made? And it's like, well, you remember that day when you were walking down this beach? I was like, yeah. And, and, and then he says, yeah, you stepped on a spot that if you just dug two feet down, you would have found a billion dollars of treasure. Uh, you know? And so, like, that's, that's kind of what... It, it it reminds me of yeah which and, to be honest I'd be there for and, and, and you know you never know you you it's it, I don't know we we are very difficult to understand and see our own trends and patterns and so I think there will be an element of like yeah man, man, manually enter your stuff but the 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 mind blowing things are the things that already catch catch you once while you're doing what you're doing now I read in post about a reporter who was talking about their hesitations with Apple's new journal app, which is to 
it's more of a mindfulness journal, a lot of photos and stuff like that. And this is, I look at this as more of a, a pull than a push thing, but, uh, they, she talked about her problem with the existing ones and this is really not funny, but I'm laughing. Uh, she took some photos at her mom's funeral. Oh yes. And then Apple, the, I, the apps, the current app made a memory of this date showing funeral oh, with yeah. cheery music. And then it pops up in like, you know, her feed, like her widgets, it shows their mom's coffin. Yeah. Well, and like, Hey, uh, your mom did die. Happy Thanks, memory. Bryce. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> you know how I know that? Cause I can't call her. Oh my God. Phone. Also my an app. Still on your with phone. us. Yeah. yeah well, you know, I, I did read that. And, and I think that's a problem with all of these like proactive. That's a very big problem with the thing I just described is, well, how is it going to know the difference between a funeral and a church? And well, it can now. Like the AI's gotten better. They're used. The, the the problem Apple has, Apple's trying to do everything on device, which is great until you want to do something smart. It's why, it's why. Like I don't know. Like I tend not to ask questions of any of my devices anymore. One because I was never happy with it anyways. But then you can now. The AI exists to. Oh, this is a funeral. I probably shouldn't show this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and but it it is a, it is a serious thing because even if what you're going to do is say, hey, I'm uh, I'm the AI, this is a funeral, maybe we should resurface this. There is probably a way to to ease into that. There's probably a way to get someone started in the remembrance experience workflow. There's some way to get people into that headspace where they don't have have to hit a button to hit start, but they can be confronted with something maybe a little more difficult uh proactively that's uh, it's it's a symptom of a really interesting problem um and yeah. i'm sorry about her mom i'm sorry <laughs> well, it's not about her mom yeah i mean it's her. So bad for her or or is. whoever you know what no i'm not gonna say whoever i'm gonna i'm gonna stop making jokes now um yeah journaling do you do you, yeah. brian have you considered a journaling app considering the way that you are pretty every day no uh in fact uh, there are apps that what, will what, do whatever, beta. whatever journaling i am accidentally doing um is i'm tricking myself because i always write the email as you know okay what what are all the things i wish i had gotten done today that'll be my to do's that i see first thing tomorrow along with that let me you know remind myself that i that these things went right. So, so I don't journal for, uh, in any way for the sake of, of actually, you know, uh, keeping my memories because it, part of it is because so much of what I do is recorded on camera. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, yeah, if, if I ever want to know how I was, I, I can always look, uh, but I, I don't know. Hmm. It, it's an interesting space and it, it it's certainly interesting. The, well, this is more businessy, but the the idea of like, okay, Apple's starting a journaling app. What happens to all of the other huge journaling apps that have built up? You know, people having archives of things, people having subscriptions to things. Who knows? But that's a broader Apple integration thing. Well, yeah, I think that comes into. I think a lot of it, a lot of the journaling thing, as we just talked about before, the value kind of came as you do it. It's not so much the recall later, but I do think there. A lot of cool things that can come from having the ability to later on go back and take that data, do something interesting, interrogate yourself, ask yourself questions, like, you know, particularly input it, like getting really good keyword taggings and doing embeddings and stuff. Like, I don't know. I think, I think that now that we have this era of AI that can process large amounts of data, there's a lot of potential value to be resurfaced from this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, we all want to take photos. We all want to do things. It doesn't hurt to look back. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I hate that. Maybe. Maybe. Good... Yeah, but I like it when it sneak attacks. Ha ha! Remember us? <laughs> Funeral. Oh, well, well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all, right, all right. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Oh, okay. So I, I didn't write the article. I just read yeah. it. Uh, all right, gentlemen. Picks. Uh. Oh, I got a pick. Yeah, what, what do you got? Uh, uh, I don't know if you've heard of this chat GPT thing. They got a mobile app now. Dude. Hmm. Uh, it's it's I, pretty cool. I I keep ending up... Uh, my my thing is, I like, it, chat GPT is very cool, and I, 
I, I, I want more weight reasons to use it. My only bummer is like, oh, it's right here. What would you use it for? What are you going to use it for? That's my only thing. Cause it's, it, it honestly is like really, uh, a really fascinating tool and it's, and it's powering a lot of other really interesting things. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you have the web browser plugin on there, right? I, I don't think I do yet. Um, I'm not a, a oh, subscriber uh, at the moment. I, but I, I, I will, speaking only for myself, um, it's a completely different app when you have the web browser plugin because then you stop just asking questions and then wondering whether or not it's hallucinating. Instead, you just say, go find out blank, and you get to watch it. Go find out blank. Yeah. Um, are you using the iOS app? Uh, yes. Uh it's cool. It's good. It's like it. It works. It works really nice. Like uh, it feels like an, an app. Andrew would be proud to be a part of. I am. I. But yeah, to Bryce, to your point, like there's a lot of people who they open it up, they use it one or two times, and they go, okay, that's it, and they put it away and they never come back. And I and and for some people, it's like it's never going to be a fit. I think for a lot of people, it's once you, there is this sort of valley of chat gpt and some people are like, oh, i played with it whatever and other people are like oh yeah every hour of the day i'm doing something with it mm. and it kind of comes into how you think about it how you use it and so i mean i use it for a lot of coding i do it a lot of summarizing stuff now if like there's like a 20 minute youtube video and i want to know one thing i'll use one of the plugins and say hey uh did they talk about this here <laughs> you know like okay cool oh. got it um, I use it for, you know, summarizing stuff, ideas, things like that. I just use it any type, any type I'd love to have either an assistant or a person I could talk to. This is there. Well, uh, uh, before I even got out of bed this morning, uh, I woke up and, um, I, I had itchiness behind my knees. Um, and, uh, uh Sounds like my but... waistband, uh, of my underwear, I scratched on my back. Mm. And the first thing I typed was, uh, I just, I just, I, I opened up chat GPT and I said, where do bed bugs usually bite? And then it <laughs> described in detail, usually it's on the feet and they look like this. I'm like, well, that's not what it is. Yeah. And I was like, well, bed, I don't know when. And I was like, and then I asked, where do chiggers bite? And it says, usually they get on your body and then at night they'll come up and they'll bite you behind your knees and, and along your waistband of your underwear. And mm -hmm. I was like, like, boom. And then I didn't worry about it for the rest of the day. I, I, until just now. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm terrified. No, uh, but, but, but it, I got to wash, but, but I got to wash Marty. It, it, it goes a step <laughs> farther and says, by the way, uh, triggers are not capable of transmitting any kind of disease the way ticks are and, and all that extra stuff. Like, uh -huh. yes, I could have done a number of Google searches on my own and read an article or whatever and synthesize things. But, but in that moment, all I wanted to know is, was this bed bugs or chiggers? And the answer was chiggers. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. It, yeah, it's a, a thing where you know, obviously we don't want to replace re me medical help and also want people to very aware of these things, hallucinate, whatnot. But man, do I get a lot of stories from people about, I had a question, nobody had an answer to me, and then I did this, and then it was useful. Yeah. You know, and it's like, yeah, that's, uh, you know, seems to be a lot of that going around. And yeah. in, in the web browser plugin, it's so cool because it gives footnotes that you can click and see the original article where it got the information. Oh, nice. And you can know whether or not you, you trust that article or not. Yeah. I, I was using the Bing uh, mobile app for a while because they had they had ChatGPT built in and they had the creative mode. But it, it would also do the footnotes. I really liked that footnotes because it was like, oh, let me make sure, you know, let me double check this because uh, I'm a responsible computer user. Um Man, isn't that going to be the weird thing? If you're, I'm a, cons a responsible computer user. I'm double checking my sources. <laughs> That's going to be an old fashioned thing. <laughs> no, it's going to be a new thing. No, it's going to be. A, you're going to have to. Uh, no, I'm saying the opposite. Yeah, by the it's time it's coming back, yeah, then the next generation will be like, whatever, uh, Gen Zer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think as these things get better, the, the advantage that we have right now is that we've been so disappointed with a lot of the devices we talk to mm -hmm. that a really good opportunity for things to get better and better. And then, you know, in, by the end of this decade, these things are going to be so smart and capable. We'll be like, they were, they were dumb once. And I used to feel good. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Uh, 
Well, well here, I, I, I other... actually have an appointment I'm bumping up against, yeah. so, so I'm going to double down okay. on, on the iOS chat GPT app. It's quite good. Andrew, did you have I will I will take that pick, too. I like it. Uh, use the share, the chat. Yeah, you got oh, the, the new share. Share the prompt, right. yeah. 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 Yep. I Here I am, the guy working on marketing messaging. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new feature. You have it. It's do a the, new feature. Do the You're share the chat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the thing. The thing they did. Cool. Gentlemen, it's been after. Yo. Hey, good stuff, everybody. That's a show. We're going to take it off the air. We'll take it off. Well, I mean, just today, not not forever, everybody. That's the show forever, everybody. Great yeah, last episode. That's, that's right. we, we did it. We had the perfect episode, and we're done. That's right. No, and who needs Justin? Uh, no, we had him earlier. Okay. Uh, great stuff, everybody. Uh, anything coming up? Anything people should know about? Uh, it's Friday. No, 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 no. Okay. Lovely. Well, everyone have a good rest of your Friday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Good riddance. <laughs>